What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over improving AI even further by adding tasks to our behavior trees. So tasks are what allow the AI to actually make decisions. We can make a task, and when we're going through our behavior tree, we will see what those tasks are, which one we should choose, then accurately perform the logic within them. So I'm going to come into the game here, and you're going to see that I pick story, so my character on the right is going to be my mutant character. However, it is an AI. I can't actually control it with the inputs, no matter what I press. And I've given it a task of jumping up and down. This is the only task that it has, so it's just doing that over and over again, and there's not much else that it can do at the moment. It's going through the behavior tree, performing the tasks, and relaying that to the character to get the final result that we see here. Now, our task can be whatever we want, so we're going to go over making a basic task today. In the future of this series, as we continue to develop it, we're going to actually make tasks that we want to use in the actual game, such as moving closer to the opponent, moving away from the opponent, jumping, dodging, attacking, all these cool things. If you want to get caught up in this series before you check out this episode, you can see how we've done everything from our UI to our hitboxes, our other attacks, all that great stuff. So link the playlist in the top right corner right here for the fighting game tutorial series. But alternatively, if you don't care about that and you just care about the AI, that's perfectly fine. I do recommend you watch the first episode of the AI right here because each episode is going to be building on top of the other episodes. AI is very large. There's a lot of things we can do with it. And so we want to make sure that we have all the content we need going forward. Now with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to be doing everything in the code today. We're going to be using our behavior tree as well, but remember what I mentioned in the previous episode, a behavior tree is not a blueprint. This is a visual representation of how Unreal uses behavior trees. So this is actually still using code functions and code tasks, but it's not a blueprint. Before we go to the C++ though, we actually wanna look at how to create a new task in C++. Now what we wanna add is an AI task. There's a few different variations of this. The one we're going to be adding is a behavior tree task specifically because we are using Unreal Engine's behavior tree. So if we go to where our code is, so out of content into C++ classes and the fighter template, I made a new folder in here called AI tasks. The reason for this is a lot of these tasks are going to be very specific in what they do. And a lot of these classes that we've had to date have been just base classes for things and characters. These are going to be very specific, and additionally, if we call them all AI task underscore, we will be able to find them in the behavior tree very, very easily. So I've made a folder in here. You don't have to actually make one. And if you are going to make one, you don't have to actually do it here. You can right click and add a new C++ class. Go to all classes. We want the BT for behavior tree task. You have the BT node, the BT task node, and the BT task blackboard base. For what we have right here, the BT task node is perfectly fine. It does everything we need, and that has some functions such as execute task that we're going to implement in today's episode so that you can see how to actually put logic into a task. So BT task node, and then hit next. Call it whatever you want. I recommend calling it AI task underscore, and then putting in the name of the task. So for the first one I made jump. I also made one called move away from opponent, which is going to be something we are using in our final product. However, this one is a little bit too advanced for right now. I just want to start with a basic one. So I'm just using this jump one. For the path, I manually wrote AI tasks. So the header and the source file will both go in that folder. And that's how I actually created the folder you saw in the content browser here. At this point, you could select create class, but I've already created one with this name, so it won't let me, but you name it whatever and hit create class. If you run Unreal Engine through Visual Studio, like I do, then it will close and try and add these files in, or it may stay open and hot reload. You have a few different possibilities here, but just wait for the class creation to finish and then go to the code afterward. So here we are in the code. I have this new folder that got created, AI Tasks. And if I open it up, I have all my tasks in here. Again, I'm just going to be focusing on the jump one today, but let's open those files up. AI task underscore jump dot CPP and AI task underscore jump dot H. 
Starting in AI task underscore jump dot H, we have a very, very basic setup. You will have this include right here, the pragma wants your copyright notice and your class with a generated body. You'll also have this include for the generated.h file, which has to remain at the bottom of your include list. So we have generated body, then we have public. I'm making it public because we're going to actually be calling the execute task from another area. It is called when the behavior tree goes through and executes the logic. UAI task underscore jump. This is going to be our constructor for this task. And then we also have another function here that we're overriding, which is execute task that I mentioned earlier. This function is very important. This is essentially the logic that runs when this task is chosen in the behavior tree to be run. So as the comment says, the logic that occurs when the task is executed or run from the behavior tree. Now this is an override, so we do have to set it up exactly how the parent function has it. So here we go, virtual ebt node result, which just stands for enum behavior tree node result, colon colon type. This is the return value. The function name is execute task. The parameters are u behavior tree component reference, which is the owner component or basically the owner of the behavior tree. This will typically be the AI controller that's running the behavior tree. Then you have unit eight pointer node memory override. So virtual and override are allowing us to handle our own logic for the execute task function because this function comes from the parent class, the BT task node. So we need to override it so we can do our own logic. But this is the main function that we want for today's episode. Now to actually have this function overridden here, we are going to need an include. So include behavior tree slash BT task node dot H. Now we can go to the AI task underscore jump dot CPP. And in here, you'll just have your header file include with a comment. So the first thing I want to do is make my constructor. So UAI task underscore jump colon colon UAI task underscore jump. There's nothing in it right now, but this is what we're going to do if we have to set default values in this task. So I recommend setting it up even if you're not going to change anything inside of it. The other one is the function that we overrode. So we need to use EBT node result colon colon type UAI task underscore jump colon colon execute task with our two parameters, the owner component and the node memory. Once we have this function here, we can fill it out with this logic. So what I'm doing for today's episode is literally just grabbing the owner component, making sure that there is an owner. And if there is calling the force jump function that we have in our base AI controller class, if we're able to do those things, then we're going to mark the node or the task as succeeded. Otherwise, if we're not able to do those things, we're going to return that the node or the task has failed. This allows us to use things like the selectors in the behavior tree that I showed you in the last episode, because it checks to see if the children actually succeed and then if it should go to the next task or not. First thing, let's see if we can get an owning controller. So we're going to use owner comp or owner component dot get AI owner. This is going to return an AI controller. So we need to cast it to the type of controller that we want to use. I want to use my base AI controller. So cast a base AI controller, passing in that owner comp dot get AI owner. Then I want to set a variable equal to that to check to see if the cast succeeded and if we have a real owning controller. So if auto owning controller equals that cast, just like this. Now remember that auto is just making the type for us. So it's taking the information that's coming in and making it for us. This is really a base AI controller pointer owning controller. So this will also work. Additionally, to actually use this line because we're using base AI controller, we need to include base AI controller dot H. So just add this include here, and then you'll be able to do this if statement. If we go inside of this if statement, we know that the owning controller is valid. So we have an actual base AI controller here. At this point, I'm going to call force jump on it because this is my jump task. Force jump is a function I have in base AI controller dot H. However, you'll notice that previously in the series, this was in the private section of the class. And so I want to actually be able to call it from another class here. So I've moved these three lines that I've commented out force jump, force crouch, and force block. So the force jump, force crouch, and force block, I'm taking them out. I'm going to move them over to this public section here. I already had it. I have the practice state and possess pawn in here. I've just added these functions in here as well. 
So once you've moved them over, you will be able to call force jump here, owning controller force jump, which is basically just forcing the player controller to input jump. Since we were able to do this, I am considering this task as having succeeded. So I wanna call finish latent task, which basically just means this task has finished. You don't technically have to tell it this, but if you don't do that, then you'll have these nodes continue to run because they're not aware that they should be done yet. Now finish latent task takes in the owner component as well as the result. Owner component is the owner component that comes from execute task. The result I'm manually putting in here, but you could save out a variable based on other conditions and pass it along. So ebt node result colon colon succeeded because we have succeeded in this task. Then execute task also returns a type. So we need to return this from the function as well. So return ebt no result colon colon succeeded. Now else, if we don't go into this if statement right here, that means that we weren't able to get the owning controller. So for whatever reason, the owner component wasn't able to be cast. Thus, we don't have a controller to call force jump on. So this task has not succeeded. So we want to return that it failed. You can see here, I didn't call finish latent task, and it works fine, but we actually should do this. So finish latent task, we're gonna pass in the owner component, because that's still valid, but this time we're using ebt node result colon colon failed. And there we go. Then after that, we will return ebt node result colon colon failed. So now this task is ready to be executed. At this point, we can go back into the editor and add it to our behavior tree. But first, there's one thing I wanna fix about our base AI controller.cpp. So this isn't relevant if you're just watching the AI tutorials, but it is relevant if you've been following the entire series. So the tick on here, I had set up some behavior to make our character do certain things in practice mode so we could test different practice states with them, such as forcing them to jump, crouch, or block. If we didn't have a practice state, which is the default value, then the possess pawn character state was being reset back to the default value. The problem with that is now that we're using AI outside of practice mode, this is still going to be occurring. So I commented it out, but really the solution here is to check what mode we're in. If we wanna keep this tick logic and we don't wanna use tasks, that's fine, but we would wanna to check to see if we're in practice mode at all before checking this value. What I did to keep life easy was just comment out this line right here. If you comment out this line, then it won't do the logic to reset the character state, and thus the task that we make in today's episode will work fine. Just be aware of that. This is something that we will address because I'm actually going to be taking all of this out and just replacing it with tasks now that we have the proper setup to do that. For now, as long as you disable this, it's fine. We will address that in another episode on practice settings. Now at this point, we are good to launch the editor. Now the editor is back open, we want to go to our behavior tree. So for me, that's base AI behavior tree. It's in blueprints, AI, base AI behavior tree. In the previous episode, I had my root where the behavior tree starts, the test selector to determine what child task we wanna run, and I was just playing this open door sound. In the example from earlier, you should have noticed that the open door sound wasn't playing, and that's because a selector will keep executing until a child succeeds, and we were saying that the jump task was succeeding. It always reads from left to right. You can see they do have an index here. So this is the first one, and out of the children, we have one and two. So it runs the jump task, it succeeds, and we don't need to go to this task. Now I'm going to remove that open door sound because we don't actually need that. That was just a test. And at this point, we don't even really need a selector if you don't want one because we only have one element. But I will keep it for the purposes of demonstration. So now we want to add our jump task to the behavior tree. And the way you do that is just simply right click and search. And I have jump. Jump shows up automatically because it is AI task underscore jump. And so it knows to filter out the AI task and it just uses jump. Select that and you'll get this node right here. I don't have anything set in here for it. This is just my jump task. And once I put this in here, everything will work as expected. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and consider joining the YouTube membership, Patreon, and Discord subscriptions to help support the channel further. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out. And that support is completely free. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.